take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Eternal life, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. Go save my soul. I want to live eternal life. Go save my soul. Eternal. Itana, Itana, The saints go marching in. Hallelujah, Lord, I want The saints go marching in. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I Now, pray like that to God. Pray that one to God. Pray it up to God.
Jesus name we pray a divine God this is the reward of obedience to the gospel eternal life this is the mystery about God eternal life this is God's grace and gift for mankind eternal life thank Lord divine I am praying your children that here will desire eternal life and those who have received will protect this life in themselves in Jesus name Amen. we shall live eternally with God in Jesus name Amen. the power of eternal life will begin with us on earth until we enter into heaven forever Amen. thank you for answering Lord <clears throat> Jesus name we pray Amen. you can be seated Jesus is your eternal life Jesus is your eternal life say Jesus is my eternal life lay hand on yourself say it again thank you in the book of first john chapter one verse one and two first john chapter one verse one and two the bible says that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the world of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us you can see here John said we have been hearing about the everlasting God we have been hearing about the eternal God the one that is the beginning of all beginning the one that gives beginning to everyone everything we have been hearing about him it came to the point he became man and we saw him with our eyes our eyes have seen him the eternal God the everlasting God we have now he became man we saw him with our eyes which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon we stayed closely to him we heard him we investigated him and saw that it is like that this is the everlasting God the disciples from time to time would say now we know that you are the son of God Thomas said you are my Lord and my God having looked at him looked upon him searched him diligently walk, walked with him walked with him 
we have known this is eternal life and more than that he said and our hands have handled yes the john lean upon his shoulder they touch him they touch him the man jesus the god man jesus their hands were on him their hands touch him which we have handled and what is he of the world of life the world of life the eternal world that gives life the eternal world that gives eternal life again for the life was manifested that eternal life revealed himself that eternal life came appeared to the world the everlasting life appeared to the world the personality of forever life appeared to the world yes and we have seen it we have seen the being of eternity the being of eternal life we have seen it and bear witness we are so sure now we are telling you about it we say yes he is eternal life we are witnesses so we are now telling it to you about the life that lives forever we show him God, the, the God of nature, came, we saw him, and we bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life. Now, it is our responsibility to reveal to you eternal life. It is our responsibility, having uh, been assured, having proved all these things to be so, we are now telling you why. Because we want you also to have eternal life that is why we are revealing these things unto you and we show we were showing it unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us the same with the father the same with the father for god is three persons in one jesus was with the father and is himself god just as the body your soul is in your body your spirit is in your body and is all together you so he has been with the father and is himself god that's what we are presenting do you know what we're saying there is a message to the world that the people are not aware of that god has given man the privilege to live eternally with him God has given man the privilege to have eternal life. That's what we need to know. And Jesus is eternal and everlasting God. He, he lives forever. He created man. And breathed, he created man in his image and likeness. And breathed into man. And man became a living soul, which means man became eternal soul. His aim is that man should live forever in eternal life. There are two different things here. Forever, eternally, is not is different from eternal life eternally life without end eternal life life with the fullness of living without end eternally no end eternal life life with fullness of living without end but eternally i'm going to tell you that when the lord breathed into man a man became 
eternal soul to live forever yes but eternal life is not only a life that lives forever it is a life that lives forever in righteousness holiness peace power love health sound health satisfaction joy happiness pleasures comforts safety and much more that's eternal life complete pleasures of life Com a life in complete satisfaction a life in perfect peace a life in perfect joy a life in perfect comfort a life in perfect holiness a life in perfect happiness that is eternal that's how god is god lives eternally a life in full of power is is you're full of power and you live forever this is eternal life but the other side it is uh, it is living forever or living eternally put don't put life inside you can live eternally but it can be eternal date eternal date is the opposite of eternal life they have one they have uh, a common denominator and that is living forever but they have differences the other one is living forever in perfect peace perfect satisfaction perfect joy perfect comforts while the eternal date is living forever in perfect sorrow perfect pain perfect misery so you cannot see the, the branches of the tree two main branches of eternity one eternal life the second one eternal death and both are eternity sin came into man from satan and destroyed the property of eternal life that was in man and left him with living forever in normal heart earthly life but exposed him uh, he, he also exposed him to the judgment of god eternal death when satan came and tempted man in the garden of eden man had the power of eternal life with him because he was to live forever but then satan came and brought sin into him and destroyed man and introduced death unto man yes god's aim was that man was to live eternally with him but because of sin man experienced death eternal death you can now see god's aim is that you should live eternally with him you should have eternal life but if you allow sin into your life eternal death will take over you eternal death will take over your life that's what you need to know a sinner is doomed by god to everlasting punishment in hell a sinner look at it in the book of matthew chapter 25 matthew chapter 25 the bible tells us verse 46 and this shall go away into everlasting punishment and this shall go away into everlasting punishment but then the other one 
but the righteous into life eternal can you see the separation here they are both everlasting oh they are both eternal everlasting punishment everlasting life eternal punishment eternal life when sin came in man felt to eternal punishment by the judgment of God if you allow sin to come in and take over your life you are moving on to everlasting punishment but if you maintain righteousness that is in Christ and continue with Christ you are going to experience everlasting life eternal life so that's what you need to know right right from the earth the sinner is assigned to a life of pain sorrow regrets torments ex uh, oppressions sickness fear wretchedness destruction and misery after death these evils continue with him inside the fires of hell to all perfection for ever and ever this is called the second death the wages of sin when you allow the devil to come into your life as they, you are, they are trying to initiate you into witchcraft, into occultism. There is a purpose. Oh, you are there already. Already we have talked to you to come out from that place. There is a purpose. When you are enrolled into clubs, social clubs, to do social evil, when you give your life, to all these women type of business of exposing your body, wearing miniskirts, painting yourself. You give yourself to jewelry and to all. You are wearing trousers as a lady. When you do that, you, these boys that are buffing, coughing on their head, doing many things and living all type of wretched life. When you allow the devil to deceive you to that point, see the reward. What's the aim of Satan in John chapter 10? Verse 10 The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The purpose of the devil in your life, giving you these comforts, giving you promises. You can have money cheap, you can have telephone very cheap, handset, you can have it very cheap by stealing one. You can have more money by killing people. You can have this by doing this. By, you can get more money by committing immorality. You can be doing abortion for people. You, can be, you will have more money. The reason of Satan bringing this thing to you, enrolling you to this iniquity, is to bring upon you perfect pain in eternal death, to eternity. Perfect sorrow to eternity perfect regrets to eternity perfect torments to eternity perfect oppressions to eternity perfect sickness to eternity perfect fear wretchedness destruction and misery that is the end that tree is branching off that branch of tree that you are standing under, that you are sitting on, that you are holding, is branching to hellfire. Is branching to everlasting damnation. That is his reason. Look at it in the book of Revelation. Because now you don't know. See, you will know it. Some of you think <laughs> a story was told of two thieves. One I think one was an uncle. He taught this boy, his nephew, arm robbery. He taught the nephew arm robbery. So they were doing all this until one day they were caught. And it was time for fiery squad. 
to fire them. As they were marching to death, this, the boy, oh, oh, yeah, hey. and this boy, this uncle was said, don't worry, don't worry. What is he not to worry? Do you have any reason to tell him not to worry? He is going to damnation. To them, they are thinking that when they die, it is finished. Uh, that's the ignorance in you. That's the ignorance in you. You forgot the man is an eternal soul. You forgot the man is an everlasting soul. It's only whether it should be life or dead. See what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And dead and hell delivered up the dead which were in it. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is the final thing. <laughs> Awaiting every man. You die a sinner. You said they are fire to that soul. Immediately you just die. Your soul goes to hell as a sinner. You will be in the torment of fire waiting for the final judgment. When you will still be brought back from hell and be told properly what you did when you were on earth. And you will be told clearly your sins. They will mention them one by one. So you won't say God is wicked. What did I do to God? Because some of them are still saying eh, God is wicked. The Lord will point to them one by one what you did to your uncle what you did to your mother what you did to your sister what you did to your neighbor what you did when you were in school what you did when you came to that conference what you do what you did in the church what your gang did you were the leader of that gang what the gang did the armed robbery you committed here the one you committed there the number the amount of blood you shed when you were on earth all these things the immorality they all you shall be told them officially and then condemned to the lake of fire the hell fire that the people are in now is not the actual punishment it's just a remind room for sinful prisoners after the end of all things the both the hell fire itself will be cast into the lake of fire and the sinners also shall be cast into the lake of fire that is called the second death it is the eternal death it is the everlasting death perfect pain perfect torture perfect sorrow perfect torment perfect wound perfect cry perfect for ever and ever but as for now god is patient it's only the five wise virgins that are hearing the word and are getting kerosene in their lamp putting oil in their lamp and are getting themselves prepared for the bridegroom but the rest of you who are foolish virgins that's where you're going that's where how it shall end up with you so it is not that when you die the battle is over if they shoot me that's over if they kill me what that's over that's why some of you want to go and commit suicide you think that when i die in suicide the matter is over i will die and go i'll take poison and die immediately you take poison you appear in hell for it is given unto man once to die and after death the judgment immediately you think suicide is better Better you keep your life on earth. Whether mercy will come, whether you will go to where mercy will, will find you, then that you say, let me kill myself and die. Let me kill myself and die. That's the worst thought. That's the worst. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. Now, eternal life through Jesus. Eternal life through Jesus. 
I've told you already, Jesus, the everlasting God, he became man on earth for the purpose of eternal life. The everlasting God took the form of man so that he can give man eternal life. He can do all that is required to bring forgiveness to man, to bring change to man, to bring righteousness to man, to bring holiness to man, to guide man on the path of truth so that man can live forever with God. John chapter 3 verse 14 to verse 16 17 John chapter 3 I read from verse 14 the Bible tells us here saying and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life can you see that now can we say that one uh, verse 16 john chapter 3 verse 16 say it without even reading your bible one two go for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life can you hear that and th i'm just reciting it like a child without understanding why did you not find the meaning to that scripture the love of god for your life that he gave jesus that if you believe on jesus you will not perish but that you will have everlasting life you will have eternal life very simple Many people have got it already because since they came here, they believed. Many had it before they came because they have been believers. And now we're waiting for you. What are you waiting for? To believe and have eternal life? Is there any other thing? No. Where everything is ready for you so that you can have this eternal life also. It's very simple. And he said something in verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. The mercy of God is such that although man is still doing evil, Jesus came, he's not to condemn them. A man smote Jesus, slapped Jesus in his face. I said, prophesy, who slapped you? He didn't kill that man. A man spat on his face. Hell, hell, thou king of the Jews. They mocked at him. He had not come for judgment. It is when he comes again that the judgment will take place. That every foolishness you did in the presence of Jesus, you will see it. If you die, they will wake you up again and deal with you before you are sent to everlasting punishment. Every careless word, careless word, with every careless action every foolish thought foolish kind of wickedness you exhibited on jesus or on the people of jesus you will never go scot-free but as for now he is quiet maybe satan is the one doing it so that by by and by you may still be saved because the people who say crucify him crucify him crucify him some of, some of them came to believe. Even among the Pharisees, some came to believe. It's the patience of God. That's why you see God patient. You can be kicking things. You can go to kitchen and push down some things. You can be doing something and say, yeah, I am here. That's why you're still there. You would have died since. You would have been smoting. Although now he still smites some people, but he's, he's, he's doing it selecti selectively. Not in a general sense. The Bible says that the reward of iniquity is not speedily executed it's not speedily executed that is the reason why people continue in sin but then the god sent not his son into the world now for its condemnation but for its salvation therefore when others are playing and are playing stubbornness are playing rudeness don't follow them 
when others are hardening their heart don't follow them because this is just the short time for mercy and you may die and miss this mercy you may die and miss this mercy as you die you go to hell and at the end of time you shall be brought back again from hell judged and thrown into the lake of fire but it's now time for mercy so don't play with it play with your life people are writing examination the result will come and show the difference others are playing others are not studying in school they're doing other things but you don't follow them don't follow them you are writing exam these are the days of examination you must study to pass this exam when the result shall be announced we shall see the difference those who are playing up and down from class to class you shall see the difference those who are sincere and true with the academics you shall see the difference in the same way it is time for salvation now now is the day of salvation now is the acceptable time that god can accept you god can change you god can deliver you god can give you a new life don't play with this period don't play this age you are in remember the creator in the day of your youth it is the time for him it's the time to come to jesus it's the time to be with jesus it is the time to choose jesus that's what i'm saying that's what scripture says in the book of john 17 verse 3 john chapter 17 from verse 2 and 3 as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him see how many we are the lord jesus said he has commandment from the father to give every one of us eternal life that's the will of god i have instructed these people that every one of you should eat food is that not so you even see me going around supervising it to ensure that all should get the food the father instructed jesus ensure that all these ones let them have eternal life so the provision has been made if you do not get it is your own not because it's not available it's you who met who refused to get so yeah he said and this is eternal life that they may know they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent the same person this is eternal life know god and follow him know god and believe in him know jesus and submit to him that's what is this is eternal life yes and that's what god is saying in first john chapter 5 verse 11 to verse 13 first john chapter 5 verse 11 to verse 13 the bible tells us here saying and this is the record the, yes and this is the record that god had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that had the son had life and he that had not the son of god had not life these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. He that has the Son has life. He that has known the Son has no life. In the room, every room that has a bulb has life every room that does not have bulb in it does not have light that is what is we are saying if you have jesus in you you have life if you don't have jesus in you you don't have life now this is said so that you who have have jesus in you who have jesus in you should know that you have eternal life and that you should continue to hold jesus firmly don't leave him don't allow anybody to remove you from Jesus. Don't. He will remove you from eternal life. 
don't some people will want to play preacher on you i am your father if you ever go to that place again it's removing eternal life because you will remove jesus i will preach i will say you'll be like that muslim lady who repented she repented god jesus and the mother said what do you say he said jesus what do you say again help her to say jesus the mother said, your, your elder brother is coming. He will handle that thing. So the elder brother can say, your sister said he has gone to Jesus. Taboo. Taboo. The brother said, hey, come here. What do you say? What? I, I, I have Jesus in my heart. I've given my life to Jesus. What are you saying? Renounce those things. No, I can't renounce. I will beat out Jesus from your life. I said, renounce that thing. He said, you can't beat out Jesus. Okay, let's go into practice. The man went into total beating. As he beat and beat, I knew he became tired. You know, you'll be tired. You people are fearing beating. In the bad beating, you will also become tired. So the, the lady said, you can beat me injure me wound me but you can never beat out jesus from my life why should you be fearing and hey, my father said my mother said you you don't understand this precious gift of eternal life you don't understand this precious gift you want to carry it back to the mire as pig a pig that is worse is going back to the mire because the heart has not left that place so don't do that don't allow any persecution don't allow any terror all this giraffe they're doing in schools to carry to remove eternal life from students a lady called me and said they said we should contribute money for uh, passing exam without tears i said no i won't contribute so but when we came to class some people had contributed. When we came to class, they wrote answers on the board for whether you contributed. <laughs> whether you contributed or you didn't contribute is for you. Pass exam without tears. So there's one of the questions there that I didn't, didn't know. So I went to this miracle board. It's miracle blackboard. Pass the exam without tears. So I got some from there. Now with this now, God knows how I have tried. Do you, uh, how am I doing restitution? <laughs> do I have any restitution to do? Does she, does she have a restitution to do? Yeah. Uh, thank God you. I'm sure she will listen to this message in CD. If she's not here now, you have restitution to do. Because you did not fight to the end. You did not endure to the end. You did not persevere to the end. It is they that persevere to the end that shall be saved. But the devil has made it such that it's by force now. He is using all principles to remove eternal life from you. So that he will say, I have finished with students. Nobody there has eternal life. They are contaminated. But we are producing new people now. People that are like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that shall never hear the decree of the king, that shall never fear the fires of Nebuchadnezzar, that shall never kill, they said, never, Nebuchadnezzar, don't talk again. I say, we shall not respect you in this matter. We are ready to give ourselves to be burnt by your fire. If God will not deliver us, it is his will that we should go to heaven now. Otherwise, our God shall deliver us from your fire. We are raising our people. Are they there? I say a new generation of Christians, the ones that will welcome Jesus and bring and, and welcome Jesus, come back from heaven. Are you here? Are you one of them? You, you mean you're one of them? You are going to stand and endure? May we hear good testimonies about you. In Jesus' name. Maintain righteousness because that is eternal life. It shows that you have eternal life. The devil is doing all to squeeze it out. That which thou hast, hold fast and let no man take your crown. That's what Jesus is telling us. 
It is not the will of God that men should perish and miss his purpose of eternal life. Hence, he provided solution to the sin problem. Jesus came to the world to remove sin from men and give them eternal life. He is eternal life. He that repents from his sins and, and, and receives Jesus into his life has escaped eternal death and has entered into eternal life. When eternal life comes into a person, that's if when Jesus comes into a person, sin, that's evil, wickedness will disappear from that person. Satan will disappear from that person. Righteousness, holiness, joy, peace will take over his life on earth. Thank you. I'm sure maybe God opened your eyes how the Lord was giving eternal life to people here as they were collecting it. All these Bibles and gifts that were given to them, angels have done it already. They have given eternal life to people already. The angels have distributed eternal life. I'm sure you collected your own. I say, I'm sure you collected your own. Amen. Receiving eternal life in Christ. Receiving eternal life in Christ is a matter of choice and not of force. God does not force anyone to repent from his sins and believe in Jesus for eternal life. He can force somebody to use him. Like that other man, what's his name, that was forced to carry the cross of Jesus. You know they forced him. But that's for service. He will never force you to repent. He will never force you. So some of you are still saying, hey, let God take me to hell and show me hell, then I will repent. He will not do that. How many people even do that? Do we have up to 1,000 people in the whole world of 7 billion that have gotten that experience? That you're also waiting? Why are you so foolish and killing yourself? God doesn't do that. If God wants me to be saved, and let him also show me sign. I, what signs are you looking for? Scripture is full of signs. Preachers are preaching with signs. For all for you to go to heaven. You want to be tough? Do you know that you're harming yourself? Fooling yourself? Why are you doing that? Why are you listening to the voice of the devil to delay your salvation or to cancel it over your life? What if God chooses not to give you again? It's a free gift. For by grace are you saved. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If it is a free gift, then why do you delay it? If it is a free gift, why are you procrastinating? What if it finished? You know, we're giving Bible to people and some, the Bible finished on the way. What if it gets finished before it reaches you? You're delaying? Get at it. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is preached and mean press into it. Don't waste time. Come back, come inside by force. You are the one to force yourself into it. You are the one. Force yourself and say, never. Struggle against the devil. Struggle against immorality. Struggle against occultism. Struggle against all this wayward life. All this bad clothing you are putting on. Struggle against those things. Struggle against youthful, youthful passions and pleasures. Breaking into salvation. Break it. As a woman, don't wait and say, I'm a weak person. I'm too weak. Struggle. If a cynic is coming to where you are, you sit down there and say, I'm a weak woman. Will not run. Run for hellfire is coming. I say, run, hellfire is coming. Struggle to get yourself to eternal life. It's not a matter of force. No. God does not force people. No, he doesn't. If he were doing so, everyone in the world would have eternal life in Christ. Nobody would have gone to hell. If God will force people, why did he not force other people? In fact, why didn't he force Satan? Why didn't he force Satan? He said, no, don't do it. Why didn't he force Satan? If God didn't force Satan to stop evil, is he going to force you? Satan will accuse him. Satan will say, am I not your creature? So, okay, so you created me for damnation. That's why when I was going out, he didn't do anything. But this man, you are the one forcing him. He can force you to serve him. Even Satan is serving God in some respect. Because all these things he's doing, God allowed him to test those who are true. God is allowing him to be the one to test, to know who are sincere. Because after lesson, there is examination. 
there is test to know so if god uh, didn't force Satan for righteousness and heaven repentance is it to force you what about those who have gone to hell if god didn't force them they are still in here crying now some are even saying nobody brought the gospel to me i didn't know about it and you you know you're waiting for it to be forced why are you so careless why are you hurting yourself why are you damning yourself so it is not a force he leaves it to human decision and choice take your decision make your choice whether you will want freedom from sin satan and eternal hellfire or not make a choice whether you want jesus christ you want eternal life or no you are free to reject jesus you are free go here into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not. I don't want Jesus in my life. Get him out from me. A preacher went to preach somewhere in Taraba State. I had the story. As I was telling the man that give your life to Jesus. Jesus Christ is coming. Instead of believing the message, he said, listen, we know that he is coming. We are of the company of Satan and we're going to fight with Jesus. The revelation said there is going to be a final war. Are you aware? He said yes. He said we will win in that war. A human being that is still alive. Who doesn't even know when he will die? As I'm saying, I'm sure the man must have died. He's saying, I am on the side of Satan. We shall fight Jesus and that we will win. Go and ask Satan whether he will win. Your master, the one that is telling you to join him fight, go and ask him whether he will win. Satan will say, I'm just deceiving you. I have failed already. If I was to win, I would have remained in heaven. That you see me like this, having tell, I have failed already. Praise the Lord. So the choice is yours to accept or reject. Look at it in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 30, Deuteronomy, chapter 30, I read verse 15 to 20. The Bible tells us here, saying, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and date and evil in that i commanded this day to love the lord thy god to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the lord thy god shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it but if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them i denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over jordan to possess it I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and this length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the lord swear unto thy fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give them life eternal life dead eternal dead placed before you blessings of life the curses of life are placed before you the choice is yours 
in case you want to choose Jesus, what do you do? Acts chapter 2. In case you said, me, I will go with Jesus. I have chosen Jesus. I cannot go to hell. I have refused it. I will repent. I will do what? What is the scripture telling you to do? Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Let's start from verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He has called. See many people here now. He called you. So he said repent now. What is repent? practical, personal decision to stop it. Cry it out. I, say, I won't do it. Practical, personal decision. Stop it. Stop smoking. Stop boyfriend and girlfriend. Stop womanizing. Stop alcohol. A practical decision. I'll stop it. Stop alcohol. Stop witchcraft. Don't throw the charms you have away. Stop cheating in your examination. Stop doing evil business. Repent. Stop, stop being in evil marriage. Repent. Stop. That's what it means. I stop. Now, when you are stopping, repentance is required then what are you repenting for the acts chapter 20 verse 21 acts chapter 20 verse 21 it says testifying both to the jews and also to the greeks repentance toward god and faith toward our lord jesus christ what are you repenting for? why are you repenting because of god not because you are fearing sickness. It's, you, are, you are fearing that in sickness, you, you may catch sickness. No. Because you want to please God. That's why you are repenting. Because you want to obey God. If it is God, then his voice is higher than that of your father and mother. Because some fathers and mothers will be sending their girls to go out for prostitution. It's my father that is pushing me. It's my mother that is pushing me. Some fathers and mothers will be sending their children to go out to steal. It's my father. No. It's because of God you're stopping it. Whether your father likes it or does not like it. Oh, if my mother is the one making me to do this alcoholic business. Is my father selling with this beer and say I must sell, sell it for him. I'm saying you're repenting because you want to make your way right with God. And that matter is over your is superior to your father. It's superior to your elder brother. It's superior to Idianama. Idianama. You say, I'm, I will not sell this thing. My hand shall not touch unclean thing. I will not be selling tobacco. I will not be selling alcohol. I, because I want to amend my way before God. I want to change my life before God. That is why I am stopping it. Repent. Then the next one is and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it in that verse, chapter 20, verse 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you have taken the decision to stop. But some of these things you may not stop by your power. You need power to do it. The person to do it is Jesus. That's why look up to him. Lord, do it for me. I have decided to stop, but I cannot control. 
I want to stop, but the place is looking slippery. I want to stop, it's looking slippery. Lord, stop me. Give me the power to stop it. I don't want it. And my, I don't have the power to stop this one. God, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Give me power to stop it. That's where Jesus Christ has to come in. Faith towards our Lord Jesus. This is different from other religions. There's no religion that can get righteousness. Not, the, not Islamic, not Hinduism, not Buddhism, not anything, nothing. All their moral, moral is rags. There are some sins they cannot stop. Never. They cannot. What all the teachings, all their doctrines, read all their books, nothing will happen to them because salvation is by power. Sin is power. It is pushing you inside. Salvation also has to be by power. And the power is coming from Jesus. To break it. That's what the Bible says. As many as received him. To them gave he power. It's the power to break sin. It's the power to stop sin. It's the power to bring about a change in your life. That's why you have to look to Jesus. Any other man from any other religion. Tell him it's a failing religion. They cannot achieve righteousness there. Because sin is power. Satan, that is the one controlling them, is power. And it takes a higher power. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. It takes a stronger man than he. What is the name of the stronger man than Satan? Jesus. What is the name of the stronger man than sin? Jesus. What is the name of the stronger man than death? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. That's why you call on him. That why, do you know why also you have to invite Jesus to call on him for your salvation? Because you have committed many sins already and record of heaven is keeping them. And you're supposed to die for those sins. The reason why you have to call on him is because he has died for, for those sins. You are now saying, God, I am identifying with Jesus who has died for my sins. Take his righteousness for my righteousness. Your late, he has taken away my judgment for the past sins that I have committed. Now, Lord Jesus, I hide under you. Blessed is the man whose iniquity is forgiven. Whose sin is covered by the Lord Jesus. That's why you need Jesus. That's what we need. And again, what's the next thing where you have given your life to Jesus? Mark chapter 6, 16. Mark chapter 16. I read verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth. What's the next thing? And, and, is baptized shall be exactly three plus x is equal to six what is x If you don't know, I will tell you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Here is mathematical equation. It says salvation plus X is equal to, I mean, sorry. Belief plus X is equal to salvation. What is X? No. Water baptism, clap hand for me. <laughs> Are you getting it now? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Join him to shout hallelujah.
and you say you have believed and you're not baptized in water and you say i'm saved i'm saved i mean of course saved from sin as well but you have never entered heaven yet there's still a final salvation that is required for you to have when you leave this world there's still a rapture that is coming to take people out of this world is only for those who believe and are baptized and are baptized only for those who believe and because man shall live by what every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god until heaven and earth pass there shall be no jot or tittle pass from the scriptures until all be fulfilled then why are you not baptized you say you're born again you're playing with water baptism you're playing with water baptism in your church they don't emphasize it they don't even know jesus there or else they want to baptize you they say uh, every person born you are born to the house of god so they baptize you from church you, instead of another baptism when you are born again they say ah we have baptized you from church satanic gospel baptism is not for children is for those who have believed children are not hearing the gospel and understanding so it is not time for them they have to come to the level they can hear and believe before they should be baptized but they baptize you when you are an infant that's not the baptism of scripture and beside you baptize your own in social water baptism social Every boy who grows up in that church must be baptized. Every girl must be baptized. If you are not baptized, you are not, <laughs> you are not a social man. A particular boy, he got baptized. It was his time. You know, baptism, what do you, you behave sanctimonious because they're going to baptize you. And so when they baptized him, it was a wonderful ceremony. The girlfriend had to visit them, him to celebrate it. They celebrated immorality on water baptism. So, when the girlfriend also came to be baptized, they said, I have come for celebration too. Is that the water baptism? The Bible says, He that believes. Has that man believed? That girlfriend came and, came and celebrated water baptism? Is that not your own type of water baptism? That is not the one scripture says. Because you have not believed. You had not believed. It is now you have had the great gospel. You have accepted Jesus with a change of life that you are entitled to water baptism. Oh, you grew up Catholics. They sprinkle water upon your body. Water didn't sprinkle upon you in this place when it was raining. Was that baptism? Oh, they just gave you small. They hold water in a dish. And gave you small on your head. Small. Did you feel cool? When it... <laughs> That's not the water baptism. Baptism means immersion. In the one immersion. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Some people come and confuse. No, it is what about it is baptism in the name of Jesus. Demonic people. The devil just confused them to devil is walking frantic, just like this lady that escaped contributing money, and they still came and wrote it on the board so that she didn't escape. The devil is doing all to damn human souls by raising up teachers to be teaching contrary things. The Bible says. In the book of Matthew, I read chapter 28. Matthew, chapter 28. Yes. Now, it tells us in verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Can you continue? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, Jesus said this after his resurrection. When the Holy Ghost came, 40 days after this, the Holy Ghost came upon the people. And Peter and others were baptizing people in the authority of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
by the instruction of Jesus and the instruction of Jesus gives us the formula here in the name of the Father in the, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and so they were baptizing them in the name or instruction or authority of Jesus what now confused people why is the confusion there because there were other water baptism going on the baptism of John was still going on and the Hellenists, to those who became um, uh, Jewish, who went into the Jewish religion, they were also baptizing them as we saw that the Pharisees were hunting after people to make converts of them. But to differentiate this other baptism with the baptism instructed by Jesus, they said they baptized them in the name of Jesus. They baptized them in the name of Jesus. And what is the baptism that is in the name of Jesus? Is according to the formula given here. 40 days after Jesus resurrected. Nothing changed this formula. Forever, O oh Lord. Forever, O oh Lord. But teachers who don't know the truth, sent by the devil to ensure people should still go to hell, are confusing people. But thank God, you have been brought to the right way. The mercy of God has brought you here. We will correct all those things. We will correct all those things. Be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. So, water baptism is required for you. Water baptism is required for you. And for you also that have been into witchcraft. See what the Bible tells us. You want to serve Jesus? Look at the Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, chapter 19 verse 18 to 20 Acts chapter 19 verse 18 to 20 the Bible tells us here saying and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds many of them also which use curious arts witches and wizards I, uh, sorcerers fortune tellers occultic persons brought their books together and burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver verse 20 everybody so mightily grew the word of God and prevail. Listen, he that hides his sins shall prosper. He shall not prosper. The devil cornered you and met you a witch and a wizard or a wizard. Took you to occultism. You have now believed on Jesus. Come out publicly. This thing that you're hiding, you're ashamed of Jesus before men eh, men will say men will say did you, did you not know that jesus when they nailed him on the cross he was his body he was nailed in a naked body he did not mind the nakedness of people because of you and now you are becoming ashamed and they will know that i am witches and i'm a witch i'm a wizard who is bothering about that is the doctor announcing the sicknesses of people is the doctor going to carry sicknesses to the radio and say that man there came to me this one was his, his body that other man came to me is that what the doctor is doing is it the church that we're exposing you and you are hiding witchcraft you are hiding mommy water business you are hiding your marine kingdom and you will never prosper in christianity your name is not in the book of life because are you thinking that you are great that God has to plead and kneel down before you? You will not escape hell. If you want to believe in Christ, come out and believe in Jesus. Announce yourself, I am a witch. I'm a wizard. I am in occultism. And bring out those property that you have been using. Tell the people you killed. You are doing this thing before God so that you can escape hell. You are doing to escape hell. And you are playing with yourself as if God will beg you. The devil is the one begging you not to confess. 
Satan is the one begging you not to confess. And if you listen to that plea of Satan, you will be damned. God does not respect persons. Whether you're a child or pastor, you're anybody, you're a leader, leader in the in founder of church, you are a witch, you went into occultism, you went to practice this idolatrous business, bring them out. Show publicly. Show it. Publicly. Jesus was condemned publicly. You must condemn that devil in your life publicly. That's the word. Uh, so the problem is that, you know, they, will say, they say they will kill me. They say, we have made a covenant there. Which covenant is that? The covenant that is in the blood of Jesus is stronger than that. The covenant Jesus made, agreement with the Father for your salvation, is greater than agreement between you and Satan. It's greater than agreement between you and human beings. Come break that covenant. He says, ah, they will kill me. He that fears being killed in the flesh shall die twice. You will be killed in the flesh and you will go to hell. Because you fear being killed in the flesh. Jesus said, fear not them that can kill the flesh and have no power over your soul. Why don't you run after your soul? Let them kill you. Let us see. Let them kill you. Let us see if they have the power. The Bible says your very here is our old number. Fear them not little children. That's the word of God. And you keep yourself there for all this 20 years in, in witchcraft going from one level to the other until you have become a church rat church witch, witch church wizard church occultic boy you are not the one that is sending after pastor see the thing that you are a Christian you are not the one that is sending after to, to harm others to pollute others to pollute food because you can come to where they are cooking food the thing you are a Christian judgment is coming upon your life I said judgment is coming upon your life. Damnation is coming upon your life. Because you are willingly against God. You are willingly, you willingly sold yourself to Satan. And you prefer Satan than Jesus. You fear Satan, the creature, more than the creator. Idol worshiper. Come out from that thing. Make it public. Confess it. Say it aloud. We can give you radio. Announce. Radio Nigeria, everybody, hey, hey, it's me, I repented from witchcraft. Say it, let other people know that people can repent from witchcraft. Then God will give you reward. You're hiding yourself. You will not prosper. We're not seeing the witches and wizards repenting, but we're hearing damage. We see smoke, we don't see the fire. We want to see you come out. We want to see you repent. As you go back to your respective places, see your leaders. Confess. Get delivered. Whether your father, your mother is a witch, that, that doesn't mean anything. Get out from it. They will, harm, they will not harm you. They will poison food, food will not work. They will shoot arrow into you, it will not work. They will blow your head, it will not work. Because higher power will take over your life. So that's what we are saying. Abiding in eternal life. You have got it, stay with it. You have got eternal life, remain in eternal life. In John chapter 47. Sorry, John chapter 6, verse 47 to 58. John chapter 6, verse 47 to 58. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread that I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, but that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give? as his flesh to eat then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you whosoever eateth my flesh 
and drinketh my blood hath everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him as the living father hath sent me and I live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall live by me this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers this eat manna and are dead he that eateth of this bread shall live forever hallelujah Jesus showed that drinking his blood is essential for eternal life this means we must continually believe in his death for our sins and keep on trusting in his death every day for our lives on earth all the time blood stands for dead always believe it always remember that jesus has died for you always remember oh, and hold to it hold to it you have eternal life and it, he also said we must eat his flesh in order to have life eternal life in us in practice this refers to the word of god which is the bread of life the bible says, man shall not live by physical food bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god this is the bread of life eat the word faith in christ and meditating in his word are essential for daily life of righteousness and holiness to receive continual supply of god's word and the cleansing blood of jesus fellowship with true and righteous believers is essential john first john chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 7 first john chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 7 the bible tells us here saying that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin if you want to remain righteous fellowship we have chapter meetings spread all over the country and outside the country join the chapter meetings of holiness revival movement if you don't have anyone around you tell us we'll start one there for you for we have organized in all the state how chapter meetings and uh, holiness revival movement can be run everywhere to keep you in this righteous truth and my messages too and holy more messages other preachers mommy linda you find them in the internet just type pastor paul rica into the youtube you get all the messages type sister linda or type holiness revival movement worldwide into the internet into the youtube you get all these things out you can be listening to them on your phone in your laptop in the, any, anywhere you can have access to this you need to be in fellowship with righteous people so that you can maintain righteousness it is then the blood of jesus will be doing continual work in your life as you're hearing you're saying oh god you're praying god change me god do that i'm sorry here god perfect me god. the work of jesus will be going on in your life maintaining eternal life in you you must keep on drinking the blood by believing in jesus yes this i say that ye may know ye have eternal life and that ye may continue to believe on the lord jesus it's a continual thing keep your faith there as many as received him he gave them power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name you your belief on christ he died for you should be continual hold to it all the time refer to it when satan is challenging your life when temptation comes your way refer to it and read the bible read the books listen to the messages constant that's what you need to this is how you will get this you will overcome all sins maintain righteousness and enter heaven finally rewards of eternal life 
Second Peter chapter 3 verse 13. The Bible tells us Second Peter chapter 3 verse 13. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We are going somewhere. A place where righteousness dwells. We are going to the place of divine presence. Yes, new altogether. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to verse 4. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to verse 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. You are going to enter into this life. You are going to enter into this perfection. You are going to be in the presence of God. The hands of God shall wipe away the tears. The comfort of God shall come upon your life. The Lord shall console you in every way you suffered in this life. Eternal life. Eternal life. You will dwell in the eternal presence of God in Jesus' name. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Now, let's read from verse, uh, from verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the, Lord the, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but all, to all them also that love his appearing. In heaven you shall be dressed with crowns. The crowns are ready. They are crowns of dignity, and you will wear them forever. You will wear them forever. You will wear them forever. Yeah. When angels see you, they will say, This person, oh, he has lived a special life for Jesus on earth. This one. So they shall be pointing to one another and say, See him, man. And say, See her there. You are going to be on the special, special grave. Eternal life. Honor, eternal honor. Crowns of righteousness. Crowns of glory. Yes, crowns of rejoicing. This shall be your own portion in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 2, I read verse 7, verse 11. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The tree of life. You know, there was a tree of life in the garden of Eden. Are you aware of that? But Abraham, Adam missed it. You will eat it. I say you will eat it. Overcome Satan, you will eat that fruit. Only God knows what is in that fruit. Only God knows what will happen to those that will eat that fruit. See, if the other tree can cause this great damage in the world. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That eating the fruit of it has caused all this suffering and misery. The other opposite is waiting for you. From the fruit of the tree of life. Which you shall eat. The Lord said, overcome sin and Satan. You will eat of this fruit. Look at it in verse 11. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second dead. Overcome sin. Overcome Satan. You won't die in hell. It means you have overcome death. You will not go to hellfire. You will not go to the lake of fire. You have escaped. Death has no more power over your life. That's the reward of eternal life. In Revelation chapter 3, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. 
The Bible says, Revelation 3, 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Can you see? Sitting with his throne. Come. How will you feel if Jesus was riding a car and brought you to sit with him in honor's corner? He's, he's sitting in the honor's corner and you sit in the other side, the two of you balance there. How will you feel? I say, how will you feel? I say, how will you feel? It's waiting for you. It is waiting for you. You will balance with God. You will sit in the executive chair and balance with God. It is honor. It's a sign of honor. Oh God, honoring you because you have been faithful, because you have been righteous, because you have been holy. That's what the Lord is saying. Reward of eternal life in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Rewards of eternal life. Telling you what is waiting for you. Verse 2 and verse 3 of Daniel chapter 12 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars for ever and ever All this evangelism work, these soul winning people, this I brought 10, I brought 17, and we were doing our feeble reward here. When you maintain righteousness as a preacher, seeing your body, your body will be shining like a great star. The Lord, the Lord has great glory for you, the Lord has great reward, mighty, mighty reward. Finally, Isaiah chapter 35. I can't mention all the rewards. We cannot even understand them here now. Isaiah 35, verse 10. The Bible tells us, saying, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Your life shall be full of joy. Your life shall be full of joy. Do you know my conviction? My conviction is according to scriptures. You are going to be greater than angels. When you see an angel, uh, those who say they have seen angels, like as we even read, when the shepherd saw the glory that came from the angel, they bowed. John was saying, we, the man that shot me this, when I saw his glory, I bowed. But he said, no, 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 no. Don't bow. Only bow before God. Listen. When a man, a great man, that has servants with him, serving him, doing all things, marries a wife and the wife comes what will the servants do what will the servants do eh? angels will recognize that you are greater the position god is giving you is higher angels will serve you uh, madam what do you want madam uh, when madame is carrying the bag, they run to carry madame's bag. <laughs> yes, because it's because of Uga now. It's because of their master. Madame is master Uga's wife. Oh, is master's wife. Is the is the wife of their master. So, madame, okay, something is dating your shoes. Madame, let me clean your shoes. When madame comes to entire car, somebody runs to open the door to the car. Angel shall serve you. Angels shall serve you. Angels shall serve you. Rise up and rejoice that you have eternal life. That you are going to serve this God forever. You are going to serve this God. The reward is great. The reward is great. He that endureth to the end, 
the, the same shall be said. You shall enjoy bountiful rewards. Bountiful rewards. Yes. Eyes of no sin. Neither ears heart. The, the fullness of the reward of God. Have it been in heaven for you. Is kept in store. It is kept in store. It is kept in store. Make sure you enter heaven. Make sure you enter heaven. Make sure you enter heaven. Let nothing stop you. Close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes. Get close your eyes and be praying. I want to live eternal life, oh Lord save my soul, I want to live eternal life, Jesus save my soul, eternal life, eternal life, I want to live eternal life, Father save my soul, I want to live eternal life, Jesus save my soul, eternal eternal life. Eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. Father, save my soul. I want to live eternal life. Jesus, save my soul. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching, oh Lord, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching, oh Lord, I want to be. In the number when the saints go marching, when the saints go marching, when the saints go marching, oh Lord, I want to be in the number when the saints go marching. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching, oh Lord, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching, oh Lord, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching.
when I get to heaven I know I will see I will see my loving Jesus and sing hallelujah amen when I get to heaven I know whom I will see I see my master Jesus sing hallelujah amen Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven, I know I will see, I see my master Jesus. Sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven, I know whom I will see, I see my master Jesus. Sing hallelujah. Oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven, I know I will see, I see my loving Jesus. <laughs> when I get to heaven, I know whom I will see, I see my master Jesus. Sing hallelujah. Oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, amen, sing hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, sing hallelujah, oh yeah, sing hallelujah, amen, when I get to heaven, I know whom I will see, I will see my master Jesus, sing hallelujah, amen, get to heaven, I know whom I will see, I see my Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. When I get to heaven, I know whom I will see, I will see my Savior Jesus. And sing hallelujah. Oh yeah, sing hallelujah, amen. 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 When I get to heaven, I know I will see. I see my master Jesus. And sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven, I know whom I will see. I will see my Savior Jesus. And sing hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Ah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. 
hallelujah amen 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 hallelujah Amen, hallelujah. 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 I say, Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. I say, Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. I say, Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. We have said if the matter is amen, it's sealed up. Amen. Hallelujah, we shall be in heaven. Yeah. You can be seated. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my I believe in you, you are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior.
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe, I believe.